If you're tired of consistently losing sports betting, these are four habits that you need to let go and give up. This isn't a motivational video, but there is one piece of motivation that I will give you right now. While I was making this video, I kept thinking about the moments in my life that got me to change dramatically to become the sports better that I am today. But the truth is, it wasn't a single moment in a specific time, but it was multiple moments over a multitude of time. And I crossed it down to four moments or four habits that could take you a day to figure out or years to figure out, just depending on the type of person that you are. I'm going to tell you step by step the four habits that are stopping you from achieving whatever it is that you want to achieve in sports betting. Obviously, these are losing sports betting habits. And once you close the door on these habits, you will put yourself on the right path of becoming a profitable sports better and watching your bankroll consistently grow. The last and most important habit that I share with you is what truly unlocked my full potential as a sports better. It flipped the switch for me, and I've never looked back since. But I will warn you, if you skip just one of these habits, it's going to be the reason why you're still consistently losing. But first, I need you to smash that subscribe button if you want to beat the sports books. I'm on a mission to empower the beginning sports better, sharing with you for free the precise tips and strategies that have significantly contributed to the growth of my bankroll. I upload videos every week teaching you how you can become a profitable sports better, and you're not going to want to miss a video. The first habit that is killing your gains is your over reliance on betting on favorites sports are unpredictable and it's natural to have that tendency to want to gravitate towards the favorite but falling into this trap can have significant downsides so the first mistake you make is you're looking at the slate for the nba games and you see this raptors pistons game right here and you just think to yourself well you know what the pistons are at home and they're minus 130 so you know, I just feel naturally more comfortable betting on them because I just think they have a better chance of winning. But a common issue is there's a lack of value betting on favorites or especially heavily favored teams. And by fixating on the favorites, you're missing out on potential value with the underdogs. I find so much success betting in the plus 105 to plus 125 range. And they're not that crazy of underdogs, guys. They live in that 44 to 48% chance of actually hitting when you're looking at the probability. And another reason why there's an over-reliance on favorites is because so many people are just betting with the crowd or they're tailing the guy on Twitter's picks or their buddy's picks at the sports bar. And this is the first bullet point on this habit where you're just kind of blindly following certain people or crowd and you're not doing any of your own research and you're taking the favorites because it just feels right. And then that next bullet point is your buddy at the bar overvaluing the recent performance of the favorite and then explaining to you why they love this place so much and that it can't miss. Something that is often overlooked in sports betting is that it's unpredictable and there are no guarantees. And the problem with overvaluing recent performance is because you have recency bias. It leaves a lasting impression in your memory, especially if you watch the last game. So okay, I've talked you into maybe betting some more underdogs or at least looking their way, but that's not going to mean a thing if you can't control your emotions. Sports betting can be a wild roller coaster ride, taking you from extreme highs to extreme lows, and sometimes it can happen just like that. Maybe you bet on that baseball game and they're down to their last out in the bottom of the ninth and then they hit a walk-off game-winning home run. The whole game you're at an extreme low thinking you're going to lose this bet and then the next thing you know you're on top of the world. Whether you're going through the highs or the lows, you need to keep your emotions in check and yes, this is easier said than done. Because if you neglect your emotions, this can lead to irrational decision making. Maybe your team kicks that game-winning field goal in the last seconds of the game to win and now you are just on a high that you've never experienced before. And now you're going to bet that next game because you know it's a surefire can't lose play. But you haven't done any line shopping, you haven't done any research, you're just going off of a gut feeling and you're just riding that wave. And this leads into the next bullet point of habit two, which is chasing losses. And it's so hard because you just saw the whole game, this bet can't lose, you got the money in your pocket, and then boom, in minutes, you lose, and now you're completely devastated. Consistency is the hallmark of a successful sports better. And successful sports bettors have a well thought out strategy. And if it's the last bet of the day that lost, they aren't going to deviate from that plan and go bet the next game. They understand that they are in this every single day and they are going to have losing days. 
You just accept it and move on. So what do you do? You just start blindly betting the next couple of games because you're trying to get back the money that you lost. And that is the quickest way to dig yourself in a hole so deep that there isn't a ladder out there in the world that you can buy to get yourself out of it. I don't watch 95% of the games that I bet on. And the main reason is, is because it doesn't take an emotional toll on me. I simply just check the box score at the end of the game and see, okay, we lost. But I have no idea the in-between part of that game if I was up or if I was down. I just know what happened at the end. The next bullet point to habit two is then your impulsive live game betting. You're out there watching Garrett Cole just mow down a lineup one afternoon. And the number nine hitter is going to lead off the next half of the inning and you go, well, Cole already struck him out once. There's no way this guy is going to get a hit off Cole. So we're going to definitely bet this guy to strike out again. And then what happens? The guy gets some little broken bat infield single and you're losing your mind because he had no business doing it. It all kind of comes back hand in hand to how sports are unpredictable and your gut feelings are going to leave you in ruins. But if you're not paying attention to your bankroll management or don't have any type of bankroll management strategy, you're never going to become a consistent, profitable sports better. The third habit is bankroll management, or for some of you, the absence of what it is. You're not managing any kind of bankroll at all. You have no idea. You're just throwing different amounts of money out on each play without really any solid strategy. Or even worse, you're ignoring the limits that you set each day. And that ties back to habit number two, where your emotions get the best of you. And the next thing you know, you're spending money that you shouldn't be spending in the first place. Other than maybe losing your bet in the last waning seconds, there is nothing worse than seeing all your bets that you have open and pending for the day and realizing that you're overexposed. It is truly a frightening experience to know how much money you actually have out there exposed and you're just leaving it up to chance. And the main reason is because you're not managing your bankroll. You don't have proper bankroll management. You don't have any type of strategy in terms of how much you should be putting down per play or maybe the odds that you're getting on that play. I truly believe the only way that you'll grasp bankroll management is when you lose everything that you have sports betting and you have to start from scratch. Now for the last and most important habit that I share with you that is what truly unlocked my full potential as a sports better. And that is ignoring line shopping and ignoring the odds and the value. So many beginning sports bettors live in a state or country where they have multiple sports books right at their fingertips, but they only have accounts with maybe one or two sports books tops. They are literally leaving money on the table because they aren't line shopping. So I'm over on DraftKings and I have a really good feeling that the Avalanche are going to win the hockey game tomorrow. Well, I can get them at minus 105 at DraftKings and if I wasn't line shopping, I'd say, yeah, that's pretty good odds. Let's lock that in. Now in the state of Arizona where I live, if I just pulled up all the sports books and took a look at the odds for the Avalanche money line, I could see right here over at Hard Rock, I could get this at plus 105. So it took me mere seconds to find a better value on a play that's gonna put more money in my pocket when I make this wager. And guys, if you wanna try Odds Jam, link in the description is gonna be a one week free trial. After that trial ends, use my code Billy35. It's gonna save you 35% off your first month. And you're gonna be able to have access to a plethora of tools. And one of them is just gonna be able to check the lines and check the odds. Now there are a lot of free websites like covers.com or scoresandodds.com that you can go and check the odds in the location that you live to find the best price possible for whatever bet that you're trying to make. Line shopping is just truly a no brainer and it's no reason that you can't take a minute of your time to look at all the sports books where you live at and find the best odds for the play that you're looking to wager on. Line shopping was the first appetizer in helping me become a profitable sports better, but the main course was understanding odds and the value. Understand that we can find little edges at sports books with the odds and the value that is provided turned my brain from focusing on plays or players that I thought were going to win and changed the game and made me focus just on the price that we're getting these plays at. I now only concern myself with the price that I'm getting at. I don't care what sport or what market we're betting on. If I'm getting a good price, then I'm in. And if I can't, I'm out. You don't have to tackle all of these habits at once, but take one at a time. Work on this and I promise you, it will put you on a better path and you will become a profitable sports better. If you have any questions at all, my DMs are open on Twitter. Feel free to reach out and ask me any questions or comment down below. 
Now you have the tips to say goodbye to these habits and put yourself on the right path. One of the most crucial habits, number three, with your bankroll management is paramount in making sure that you're putting down an adequate amount of money per play. I would argue that this is the most important habit that you need to have some type of strategy when sports betting. Click this video right here that's going to take a step-by-step -step approach for you with your bankroll management and help walk you through exactly what you need to do. If you're serious about making money sports betting, you need to implement this into your strategy right now.